hi everyone uh, so in today's meetup we'll go over uh, notebooks from lesson 3 and we'll look into image segmentation using past ai and we'll also uh, like uh, look a little bit on uh, multi label classification let's uh, dive in so uh, this is like from uh, just one bit i want to say from the last time um like we had a question relating to data imbalance and what it did was um created the uh, reproduce my notebook and with what it uh, just show you i used um, 100 images for the pens uh, and 20 images for pencils and it did not do pretty bad like it did pretty well uh just give me a moment uh yeah so yeah it gave 85% uh, accuracy so 15 just 15% of error rate and uh, so data imbalance without the data imbalance there was about uh, similar there was about 11% error rate so not much of a big difference and i also tried with uh, the inferencing uh, like inference on a test set which it, the model had not seen even in the validation part i used uh, 10 images and it could classify all 10 perfectly i used another 10 and this time i used uh, cropped images and uh, images like this so it only the pencil only this nib part is visible and it like it was random like sometimes it was saying correctly sometimes it was not so uh, i guess the data imbalance part did not affect much uh, based on the the based on my very small sample size uh, i used a 80 20 split i named it 70 30 i don't know why uh, but like it so we had a discussion regarding like data imbalance so i preliminary results it does not matter in deep learning but then i researched a bit and then i found out like well dealing with images or text it does not matter but it does however matter when it comes to tabular data so when we are dealing when we would deal with tabular data um, perhaps uh, next week or next next week uh i would i would present uh, I, I, so i would like to have someone you know talk about more about like uh, the tabul the data imbalance part when it comes to tabular data so that was it from this part so uh, in the earlier part what we saw was we were doing image classification and we had a distinct label so for pencil we had some list of image from some bunch of images for pens we had some bunch of images now what happens if we have a uh, if you have a data set where an image can be can have multiple labels so if you see here this is an this is a planet satellite data set where this is a satellite image and it's partly cloudy and it's primary it's clear primary it's clear primary water so this is probably a river going through so it classifies as water as well so it can have multiple labels so how do we handle that now the best part in fast ai is that we don't have to think much about it it's very simple very easy the only thing only difference is that once we create this uh, our data this, this part um our data our data bunch create the models we can do this thing x02 so this is a partial so i'll explain first what is a partial um so suppose we have a function here i have defined it as ack we have it takes two parameters thresh and value so if value is greater than thresh it will return true else it will return false now from func tools we can import something called partial then think of partial as a creator of a function with predefined parameters so i create this ack02 is partial acc uh, this is the name of this uh, this original function and i specify thresh equals to 0.2 this is a wrong way to do it i figured out uh, why because uh, i'll just first show this uh, x0 so we are giving partial and i i'm saying value equals to 2 what it does is it uh, it creates the function this acc function and it supplies the uh, last Uh, when we are specifying this uh, value equals to two, it starts from the rightmost. Okay, so I can say value equals to two. It will take the value equals to two, and in this function, it will plug the value uh, as two. So if two is greater than thresh, whatever value we give for thresh, we can use it like this. So x zero two, we can give three. 
So two is less than three. Two is uh, greater than three. It's not greater than three. So if so, it will shift to return false. It return false. Now we can also not include value equals to two, and we can just simply do it like this. Um, we can say f two equals to partial, partial of this function, and we had, if you remember, we had thresh and value. We can say thresh equals to this, and I can say uh, I don't need to, and uh, I don't need to specify value here. So if I say this f two three. This three will become part of the value. So let's reconnect and let's just try it uh, a bit more sim a bit more simplistically. So what I'm saying is, if I have a function, uh, let's call it fun, and uh, if I have a parameter x, y, uh, in a comma b, right? Then uh, if I say uh, fun p equals to partial. Then I need to specify fun. Now I have two choices. I can either say b equals to two, uh, a equals to one, uh, y equals to three, right? And then uh, use it fun p as one. So what this will do is it will create another function called fun p, where the b, a, and y's value will be this, and whatever value I specify here, which will be the value of x. Now. I can also do this now. Here, if you if you see, we went from right to left, right? Uh, so we can also do the opposite. Uh, we can say x's value would be one, y's value will be two, a's value will be three, and I'll be providing the b's value here. So is this clear? So this is what partial does, and we kind of use it to create this accuracy function so what it's basically saying this thresh is so in a neural network the final layer will give us the uh, the probability values of whether this of how much this label uh, is uh, how much this label relates to this particular uh, image so if i if we say thresh equals to 0.2 we are basically saying is so if suppose if i have 10 classes to classify and if any one of the classes final i mean any of the final outputs i am getting uh, more than 0.2 i'll say this is also a part of my final uh, classification so while inferring or while training use this as a label so if i come here so if suppose uh, so in this example if i see clear primary road selective logging so i can safely say that in these four uh, parameters in these four output values had probability of greater than 0.2 so that's what basically thresh is and how do we create this thresh we have an accuracy thresh we have an accuracy thresh that we have somewhere defined above um and then we're just creating a partial and we are saying that thresh thresh's value is 0.2 we can like modify this to any value that we want and uh, jeremy says that like 20% I mean, 0.2. It works more often than not. It works fine, and for this particular data set, it worked pretty good. So, and the rest of the things are pretty much the same. Like, you don't have to change anything, and it's just the same similar things. And then it can, we just do the basic saving, unfreezing, and um, and then tuning, fine tuning it again, and then same thing happens. So, the only difference is this uh, accuracy accuracy function and this. Um, data set our data set already contains uh, in this case the data set already had uh, you know labels which had multiple labels so that will automatically find the per find the perfect uh, loss function for this particular data set that's the only difference uh, any questions up to now so uh, 0.2 means uh, for example if you have clear uh, can you scroll up yeah yeah so for example if you have clear 0.3 percent a 0.3 probability for primary you have 0.1 and road 0.7 you would just select those ones for that the probability is higher than 0.2 right exactly exactly so like we in your case the example that you gave uh, we'd have clear and road not primary road has 0.7 clear has 0.35 and uh, primary has 0.1 so we will not select primary we will only select clear and road okay that's how it works 
okay uh, i also had something about to uh, like talk about this um um just hold on uh yeah so this okay when i'm presenting there's this toolbar on the top and i like it's blocking some very important tabs <laughs> yeah uh so this is the uh, data block api and like um, i know we're just only like, three of us here but like i'd strongly suggest if uh, like we have not gone over this please go through it it has like uh, all the uh, important bits of how to create uh, our own data bunches uh, from custom images so suppose if you are working on any project any personal project or like uh, any kaggle competition uh, this page gives all the information we basically need to create our own data bunch from any sort any sort of data any type of data so this is a uh, very good resource and i was uh, like working with some regex functions and i was a bit rusty and i found this website called regex1 uh, on matching groups uh, this is it's a pretty pretty good uh, like pretty good resource to learn regex and like it goes from beginner so it has lots of lesson i think 15 lessons it goes from beginner to like absolute all the thing that you need to create regexes on yourself and why i'm saying this is because in one of the notebooks i think in the first lesson itself uh, jeremy has a uh like uh, the data set it's in it's for, it's based on uh like from re so it's based on regex so if we look here uh we'll have something like uh, something like this so image list from folder so instead of form folder we can have from re as well so that sort of thing so in our case in the multi label set that i uh, that i showed uh, all the examples are here in this page for uh, the next segmentation that i'm going to show it will it has um, examples for that as well so pretty good uh, pretty must have uh, resource here okay so now coming to segmentation um so what is basically image segmentation um just to give you an idea we have images and so this is an image and we are coloring pixels here so basically it becomes like this we have an image and based on some color codes and we have these color codes here for this uh, for this data set we have uh, like this color coded image so how do we achieve that so before go going into that uh, i am just going to say uh, to we need a very good data sets to do this kind of stuff so the people that did this uh, like uh, what they did was they identified individual pixels in every image and then they said okay this is a sky this is a building this is a pole and then they gave colors to this and they did it so it's a very uh, very tedious laborious task and uh, like and getting good data sets for segmentation is uh, is a kind of a challenge that i uh, that i see okay so let's dive in so we just do the our normal stuff that we have been doing uh just drive uh, mounting our google drive okay so uh this uh 100 layer tiramisu paper uses a modified version of cambid and smaller classes some images and few classes so we are we will we will be using uh, this same uh same data set same paper and just keep in mind that this paper when it came out it reported an accuracy of 91.5% so i just want you to like hold that number in your mind 91.5% uh so we'll just clone it and then if you see we have this folders uh, camvid validation train validation txt uh will come to this part uh, test train test train right so what it actually is uh, if you see in the va validation we have images we just basically have images and on not we have uh, these uh, these val images and this what i am not sure about right. val and not yes the, these are what you have created right the val and the val not uh, no 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 this are this is part this is create this is to uh, taken from this uh, github github part so these guys who created this paper so they used uh, smaller images and fewer classes Mm -hmm. and the name is the 100 100 layer tiramisu paper and this is available at this uh, website at this uh, github 
So, so where did you get this link from? The GitHub link. Uh, it's it's present in the notebook itself. Okay. Okay. So I forgot what was well not. Um, again. Uh, so we just say f names. So this is a we are, we're opening an image here, and uh, this as you can see this is the image and this. Oh, just one other bit of tidbit here. Um, like this images uh, was originally taken from a video. So it's like uh, you, you'll find uh, similar images grouped together. Like uh, if I if I see zero and I saw four, so these people who are like ahead here, so it's, it's, it's basically the same man, same man who is here and uh, that sort of thing. So it's like, uh, it's just part of a video basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, now I, I remembered what this uh, not means. So this contains annotations. Annotations basically has labels. And uh, you must be wondering how did I remember suddenly because I came here and then I saw this function. So what this does is, uh, just remember these are the codes, uh, sky building, pole, road, etc. So these are the codes that the uh, these guys have used to color code this image. And this void is for places where they did not, they could not discertain um, like which uh, which part which part of this image should this particular pixel go in. So they created void. And uh, so what this is doing is uh, we have uh, we just guess get y get y basically means label. Uh, and if you see x dot parent plus annotation slash x dot name, so give you perspective. Uh, so we have these values and we have and well or not we have this. So this contains the labels. Right. So we are just basically we just uh, like getting the label from this uh, from this path for a particular image. And we have something called mask uh, open mask in fast AI. So what it does is uh, it takes the codes take the takes the color code and it takes the image and then uh, like not not the code like it takes the it takes uh, the image and then it uh, color codes uh, using uh, using this it just basically masks it so we have something called uh, so here you you'd be able to see properly so what I'm what I've done here is I'm just converting the mask to uh, just to an array and it basically a tensor. So what this tensor has is one, 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 five, five, five. So these are numbers. So what are actually these numbers? These numbers are nothing but these codes, right? Uh, so one is sky. So if you see like probably one of the pixel is like sky here, uh, building here. So it would be zero would be sky, one would be building. So the, this, this would be building and this is what we are getting. So, and uh, so we'll come to that. Uh, sorry. Uh, so this um, array is basically description of every pixel. Yes. Yes. So we are basically saying this particular pixel is a sign or a car or a road, that sort of thing. So uh, it has 360, 480 size. So basically yes. the one that is coming now in the beginning is that like upper right uh, pixel. Left yes, yeah. that's what I believe. Like I might be wrong here, but like that's what it seemed to me. Um, like uh, this, like because this one should have been should be a building, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Um, and like this, this is road. So zero, one, two, three. This is road. So if you see here, so we have last is and we are ending with three. Right. So at the at the like um, bottom right corner we have a, we have a road here. So okay. Um, so now uh, we have um, we just doing a batch size and size is eight. And if uh, so, in the last meetup I talked about uh, uh, stacking of sizes. So suppose if we have to classify. Uh, create an image model or image classification model for an image which has a size of 1024 by 1024. We can start by creating an creating a model for smaller images. Suppose maybe 256, 256, and then making another model, fine tune it for uh, 512, 512 images, and then uh, fine tune it for uh, 1024, 1024 images. 
in this notebook, we're going to do exactly that. We have, uh, what we are doing is, we are taking the source size and then we are dividing it by two. So we are like halving it. And since we are halving it, uh, we will def we'll, uh, like define our source and our data separately. And we will see why. Later. What source is, we're creating a segmentation item list. So this is a very important part. We have to create a segmentation item list. So not just image item list or not just item list. We are creating it from folder. We already have a path. So if I come up here, we have a path and which this folder come contains Cambit. Cambit contains these uh, files. So these are path and splitting by folder. And if you remember, we had a val, a folder named val, which will contain our validation set. And we're just specifying validation is val. Label from function. And this is our labeling function. If you remember, get y uh, based on the annotation folder. And then classes equals to codes. So this code is uh, pretty much this, right? So, and we'll create, this is just the source where our images live. And this is our, so basically this is the data set. Now this will create the data bunch. So we'll transform it. Now we will do, we'll create a data. I'll come to this part later. Uh, like we'll create a data bench and with the batch size as eight. And I've given a smaller batch size because it uh, it takes a lot of memory and I didn't want to, you know, didn't want it to uh, like run out of memory. And then we are normalizing using our ImageNet stats. Now, this is a very peculiar thing, tfmy equals to true. And more often than not, we would uh, like only require it uh, for segmentation purposes, mostly for segmentation purposes rather. So what this basically does is, uh, if you remember, in any other image classification task, when we are creating a model and creating a transform, what we're saying is we're flipping the image, right? Uh, as data augmentation part. So we are randomly flipping an image. So imagine a, imagine a photo of a cat, okay? If we flip the cat, the label will also be um, cat, right? The Y values will also be a cat, it will not change. But if you look at these images, if, if I have this particular image, let's say this first image with a car here, if I flip this, if I flip the original image, the segmentation will also flip, right? So like if I flip the image, the uh, segmented parts will get flipped. So to give you better perspective, uh, suppose if, if I flip this item, right? So if I suppose I flip this horizontally, okay? I flip this horizontally basically means the sky will become uh, the lower half of the portion uh, lower half of the image and the road will become the uh, upper half. But our, uh, this is the Y value for this, this, which is basically the segmented part. And this has uh, like, this has road in the lower part and sky in the upper part, but we don't want that because we have already flipped our image. So we want this to flip as well. So what we're essentially saying is uh, whatever we do to this, uh, to this uh, like image, we also should do to the Y image, right? So this is, this is basically our label. We don't have a label here. Instead of a label, we have a segmented image. And what we're saying is whatever we do to this original image, we should also do to our segmented image because that's how we uh, balance uh, stuff here. So is this part clear? Because this is a very tricky part. So I just want like guys to be clear here on this. We'll just create a model and uh, this is an ACC Cambid. What basically this is, this was presented in the paper itself. Uh, so uh, I'd rather not bother much with the code, but like uh, the important thing here is while we are creating the accuracy, what we are doing is we are um, filtering out the void. Uh, so if you remember here, we have something called void where the, um, where the ones who wrote the paper, they discern like they could not discern uh, like it should be a road or a sidewalk or anything. So they just kept white. So we just, while reporting the accuracy, uh, accuracy, we should uh, like filter out the void uh, pixels. So that's basically what this uh, ACC cam bit is doing. So we will just set the matrix value to this. And uh, this is weight decay. Uh, I'll like, we learn about weight decay in a later, um, in a later notebook, later, um, a lesson so I'll not uh, talk much about here but this is just a, a regularization um, parameter so it just helps is helps us to uh, not overfit so 
we create a model. So we have seen we have created CNN learners uh, so far. So this has a this is a unit learner. So what is unit learners? Just give me a minute. Uh, so this is a unit learner. What basically this is, this uh, like we have a convolu set of convolutional uh, neural networks and is is U shaped because we start with an image, we reduce the size, reduce the size, reduce the size, and then we have like everything is just a single vector, um, three dimensional, like just one row, and then we build up again, build up the full image. This uh, for segmentation, like uh, this turns out to be one of the best uh, ways to do it. And so this is the architecture. Again, we go uh, deeper into segment uh, this unit architecture at a later uh, lesson. So just uh, just think of this is that so what this um, uh, line here says that uh, this on the left hand side the normal convolution network. So we start with a big image and gradually make it smaller until eventually we just have one prediction, and then it takes again again and then converts it into a much bigger image again. And uh, by the way, this is like uh, the, these notes are um, Hiromi Sunega's notes on GitHub. They're also referenced in the course. Uh, and uh, like this is a like I found this to be one of the best resources to go over uh, fast AI because it like it has literally every word that um, uh, Jeremy has said. It's transcribed here with all the relevant uh, diagrams and animations. So it's pretty pretty cool resource. Okay, so coming back here. We have created the unit learner and we just use Resnet 34. And then we just do this learn recorder plot. Our suggestion says this. So I chose LRE4, one in NEC4, and then fitting one cycle. So I have done, so I fitted for 10 epochs and I got about 89% accuracy. Uh, so 88% accuracy. So Remember, this is like two things. This is uh, not fine-tuned, and this is like we are using only images half their size. And we are running for 10 epochs and like less than a minute per epoch. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, increase this. So just a addendum to uh, what this freezing thing does. If you do learn.summary, we have something called trainable. So this trainable tells us, is it trainable or not? Can we train this parameter or not? And if I come here, if we unfreeze, and then I am fitting it again, uh, before that, let's just check one thing. So we have total param parameters of this much, like 41 million parameters, and um, total trainable parameters are only 19 million. So what we're saying is we are freezing 21 million parameters, right? After the, Okay, I'll just like, uh, after we have uh, unfro unfrozen them and we have fine tuned every, we are basically uh, training all the parameters. So non-trainable parameters are zero after training, after fine tuning basically. And how do we do that? We do learn.unfreeze. And then I tried something very crazy, very adventurous, LR by 100, don't do that. Like I was just experimenting, uh, like, uh, what I've done is like uh, I had a like already we had an LR of one in X four. I took that and like uh, um, I took that. I placed it here uh, and I took like ten times smaller value than that. And then I said like these are this should be my learning rate range. And this hundred, I think it's a too it's a bit too much. Like it's not. I just just trying something like adventurous. So it's just. Uh, something that I was trying, uh, you don't necessarily have to go 100 or something. This depends on what uh, the learning rate uh, graph looks like. Okay, so I just took to, uh, took that. And then again, I do this PCT start. Um, this is just um, uh, like 80%. Uh, I forgot what this was. Uh, anyone has any idea what this was? Mm -hmm. I think uh, we had, uh, I think it was uh, in while creating the data bunch, we had something like this and it was for creating uh, like um, the validation set, right? Uh, Eighty yeah, percent training, it, but from other hand, it's like in yeah, so, data data. yeah, it's in the learner, so I'm not sure. I forgot about it. Uh, okay, uh, moving on. Uh, so that's so that's one point we can look into. Uh, moving on, uh, so I 
trained it for like 12 epochs and I got to 92.2. So if you think about it, I said like uh, the people who actually presented the paper at that time, it was uh, 91.5 accuracy and we have like smashed it in, smashed it in like less than 20 minutes. Got so it. Is it the data set that Jeremy originally presented in the notebook or the data set that you found yourself and tried it out? Oh, this is a data set presented by uh, Jeremy itself. Like, okay. So he presents two notebooks. So he also has a notebook on CamVid. So this is CamVid Tiramisu, which is like a smaller images, smaller number of images and smaller number of classes basically and small sized images. Okay. Yeah, it's still impressive. Like, wow. So we're just doing this save and this summary uh, that I showed like with and uh, so as you can see in non-trainable parameters go zero. So we just say learn is none and we see we say gc.collect what it does is it frees up uh, the memory in from CUDA and uh, now we set size equals to source size right. Now if you remember Earlier I said we are splitting the source, which is the actual uh, data set from the data bunch. Why did we do that? Because we could then now, I mean, we can now uh, ch uh, change the size here. We could say size is size, right? So we are saying source or transform, same thing, just size becomes size instead of size by two. Then if it again, same thing, same thing goes on and this gives me one in X6 but I still uh, choose one in like four. Then I slice it, um, like this is the uh, range. Uh, and then I fitting it for 10 epochs, it did not much increase it like 92.9. Um, somewhat around, nine, it also went to 93 in one of the epochs. Now this is like, we'll fine tune it again. Same thing and this time I tried thousand, I was just trying things um, like, don't take this LRs very seriously. Uh, and I like got up to 93 with another 10 epochs of training. And if you see all the epochs took less than one uh, minute. So it was pretty impressive in time point of view. So it, I could get up to 93%. Now, uh, Jeremy in his notebook goes up to like uh, 94%. And uh, he, uh, he also mentioned that he has uh, cracked it to 95 by tuning the learning rates. And uh, in like, I had tried this earlier and I got to about 93.5, something like that. And uh, like, and then I would, this is why I was like experimenting with the learning rates. If I can like crank it up, like go above 94.5 or like 95 or something like that. Um, not successful as of now. Um, so th this is why I was like um, playing with the learning rates. What was your hypothesis behind dividing learning rate to 1000 or 10? Or it's just like random? Uh, not random. Uh, so here in this case, I had I had this uh, particular graph, right? And I chose learning rate 1 in 4. And uh, so I thought like this is pretty much flat here. So let's try 1 in 4 and then 1 in 4 by 1000. So this mm -hmm. is... That, that's what I went with like um, for the learning rates like from from one in egg uh, three to uh, one in egg uh, six seven actually mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. so I have a question so then can you scroll up so you said mm -hmm. you got one in egg six how did you yeah. what is the red dot I mean how did you get that uh, so I used uh, something called suggestion equals to true so mm -hmm. while recording learn dot recorded dot plot, so this when you mm -hmm. give suggestion dot true, you get this little red dot. So this tells uh -huh. you uh, like somewhere where you can you know uh, place your learning rate. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And and would you say that you know you got um, you know it's so fast because of the sample size is small, right? Uh, sample size of this uh, data set? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, like for image. Uh, so uh, another thing that I've noticed is for images, um, when I'm, so the highest number of images that I've used 
on collab is about a thousand images for training and that took about um 30 seconds or so um so it it basically depends on the quality of images the size of images uh, right uh, and the learning rate obviously so uh, maybe i haven't tried on the full uh, canvas paper so that notebook is also there i'll try that and then i can post the results on the slack channels okay thank you so uh, just to like how bad is 93 i'll just show you um, so this is the ground truth this is the prediction so what basically this is like on the left side you have the original image the right side is the image that you would have got if uh, you like through the learner so this is what the uh, uh, what our model produced and this is what our mo model had to produce so i don't personally see any difference between the two so i'd say like the model did a pretty good job yeah it's just about the, the edges probably but yes. like everything is so one uh, so there are some differences so if you see here uh, this pretty much this this red light i it's probably a street light here and it's pretty 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 good here and this street light is not pretty pretty well defined in this part but still he got that it is a street light Right. Yeah, yeah. Some parts of our, some parts of it are street lights. So, like, it's it's not that bad. It's pretty good actually for like uh, if you see like segmentation is mostly used in uh, self-driving cars. So, if the software can figure out there is a street light there, um, I think that should suffice for the car to like you know look for the particular images. Like, uh, is it red uh, or green? Is that, that that's again my hypothesis? So. Yeah, so 93% right now. I'll try to, you know, like reach 95 as Jeremy did uh, with different techniques. Maybe we'll learn uh, more different techniques uh, later on in the course. Let's see. And yeah, that, that's it. I, I also tried on different images, like on my random images. So this is the image. And this is what the model produced. So... Wow. This is like image of a car and a like desert mountains and this is a road. This is what it did. And then I like um, gave it a huge image. So this image, this is a New York street image. This is this image itself is like uh, four megabyte and it's a pretty big image as you can see. So how did it do? Why is it not scrolling down? It is, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is what it produced <laughs> and it's it seems this is pretty bad right but i did something uh like show fig size 1515 uh i'll show you again this <gasps> oh, that particular image you got the, like a sky and that uh, exactly. land. so i'll just ask you something how many pedestrians can you identify here three right this guy this guy this guy the biggest and, ones. yeah the biggest ones yeah so this has like one two three and I can say one, two, three, four, five, maybe six cars here. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and maybe sixth one there. Six cars, six car here. So it's it's doing not that bad kind of job, but it can do better. Like it's like maybe, kind of a bit blind, but still getting uh, yes. like object. <laughs> yeah. So uh, like my uh, rationale is like if we train it on these particular images on more street light images on like vibrant images with such kind of uh, lots of cars maybe then maybe it will be able to uh, you know figure out better so it does it, it all depends on what kind of uh, data it's trained on right so if i wanted to work on this kind of images then maybe i can put these kind of images in our validation set and then see how it performs so like uh, there's this uh, thing so uh, we have like training set validation set and test set so this was basically our test set these two images and if we are seeing that our model is not performing well on the test set then we can um, then we can like have uh, similar images that we have on our test set as part of our validation set as well so a concrete example would be suppose uh, you are developing an app on uh, for a mobile phone and um, like to um, to segmentation, like doing segmentation uh, based on uh, based on images captured by a phone. And 
you train your model on images captured by a proper good quality camera okay so like you can fill your uh, validation set with images captured from an actual phone which might include you know crappy images like uh, five year old phones or like some high end phones all bunch of images from different kind of phones put them into a validation set and then test your model on that validation set while it's learning so that will like you know give you a give the model a better uh, view of the real world scenarios it might face while doing inference so that's just uh, one uh, tidbit uh, one helpful tidbit uh, for um, developing real world models so that's it on this uh, segmentation part from my side so any questions and do you think that image size also played a role here uh, yes uh, like we trained on a different kind of image size and here the what the model had to do was compress the image right yeah so what it generated is so it it lost a lot of information and then it had to you know come up with modeling and the good the like the most uh, amazing thing is like it basically compressed the image so much and then it still was able to discern some parts of it it's pretty impressive i believe like originally it's a like it's a full hd image um 1920 1080 image mm -hmm. yeah so uh just one more thing here um so we what this fit one cycle means is that our learning rate increases for a bit and then it decreases in this particular fashion right so this is basically what one fit cycle does and we can access it by seeing learn or record or plot lr if you do it and here uh if i go back to the notebook we have something called point 8 right so this point 8 basically means that uh, it will start after 80% of this uh, is covered so this this drop so just make a rough guess so this this uh, drop is about at point 25 right right uh, so maybe 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 it's 3 so it's 0.3 so this drop will start at 0.8 that's what uh, start pct means oh, when we are uh, pct start um i couldn't get you can you can you repeat please uh what is the drop is uh so this is the uh, i'm just recording so if you see the recording of the learning rate it first increases for the um, you know for the like so for some part of the training and then it decreases oh. right so like uh, this uh you know it, it actually uh this relates to the training loss and the validation loss right so if we plot our learning rate over time this is learning rate over time so what basically is happening is this uh if if i'm doing start pct um point 8 versus if i if i do point 2 it will it will start decreasing uh earlier so point 8 it will start decreasing later so this is also a hyper parameter that i can you know play around to make this go to 94 <laughs> so that's 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 just one piece of information so uh that's it people uh that's it for today and um, thank you all for joining and i hope to see you again next time thank you